Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about the operational amplifier as a summing amplifier. It turns out we can use an operational amplifier to sum up different input voltages. In this example, we have three of them. And what we're going to do here is express the output voltage in terms of the input voltages. Also notice that this will be in an inverting operational mode because we have the input voltages connected to the inverting terminal of the operational amplifier. What we're going to do is is here is out of all the voltages entering the node A here I should not I shouldn't say voltages all the currents entering the node right there well, so when we do that we can say that I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 those are the four currents entering the node equal the current leaving the node which in this case will be zero Again, we take the assumption that in an ideal operational amplifier, the current's inputs to the inverting and non-inverting terminals are virtually zero. Also, we can say that the voltage between point A, the node A, and the ground here also must be zero because the potential difference between the inverting and non-inverting terminals is nearly zero. In other words, V sub A is approximately equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and plug in what we have here. Current I will be equal to the voltage input minus the voltage at A, which is equal to zero. In other words, this will be equal to V1 divided by the resistance across which the current has to go, which is R sub 1. And this would be V sub 1 minus zero. Actually, why don't we just write it like that? So this would be V sub 1 minus V sub A plus V sub 2 minus V sub A over R2 plus V sub 3 minus V sub A over R sub 3 and then plus the current here. Now if we have drawn the current in this direction that means that this must be at a higher potential than this. It probably isn't but that's okay because it works itself out. We're going to assume this direction which means we're going to say V O minus V sub A divided by R sub 4 and that must add up to zero. Now remember what we said here that V sub A is approximately equal to zero, so we can get rid of all the V sub A's. V sub 1 over R1 plus V sub 2 over R2 plus V sub 3 over R3 um, plus V sub O over R4. What we're going to do now is replace R4 with RF, because that's going to be RF. And so this is equal to R4, the fourth resistor. And we're going to move that to the other side of the equal sign and make that negative. That's V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2 plus V3 over R3 is equal to the negative VO over R4, but let's call R4 the feedback resistor, R sub F. And finally, we can then go ahead and solve for V sub O. We're going to turn the equation around. V sub O is equal to cross multiplying with R sub F. So we can say it's equal to R sub F times the negative of V1 over R1 minus V2 over R2 minus V3 over R3. And that is then the equation that tells us what the output voltage is in terms of the sum of the input voltages. Now notice the negative signs because when we made this positive then the, all these became negative. And notice that there's also the gain factor. The gain factor for each one is R sub F over R sub 1. In other words, we can also write it as follows. We can say that the output voltage V sub O is equal to minus the gain factor R sub F over R sub 1 times V sub 1 plus R sub F over R sub 2 times V sub 2 plus R sub F over R sub 3 times V sub 3. So there's another way in which we can write the equation. Here again you can see that the output voltage will be the negative of the sum of these voltages, assuming that these voltages are positive, and we can see that each voltage is multiplied by the gain factor relative to the, to the feedback resistor divided by the resistance on each of the three branches there. So that's how we deal with a summing amplifier, and clearly you can see again we have that in an inverted mode. That's how it's done.